To give some context, what do the following items have in common? Automatic elevator doors, improved ironing boards, three signal traffic lights and gas masks, home security systems, carbon filaments and light bulbs, animated GIFs, blood banks, 3D movies, potato chips, and even downtown LA, Los Angeles. If you didn't know, those are all a direct result of black Americans and our ingenuity. Sadly, the contributions of black Americans may seem to fall between the cracks of the more popular and widely used history books. But thankfully, due to the dedication of Mr. Carter G. Woodson, both a Harvard University graduate and a former dean of Howard University, HU, over almost 100 years ago, we now have a whole month albeit the shortest month, dedicated to honoring the participation and achievements of black Americans to this land that we love, although it's complicated. No, our history is not to be contained only in one month, but just like for those of us that like to celebrate Valentine's Day, it's an extra special time to give extra special attention, in this case, to many someones that are extra special. In that vein, and because we might as well jump on the fact that March celebrates women next, I want to highlight this Black History Month so black women in real estate who are modern history makers despite some of the hurdles they face because of their skin color and or gender. They are black excellence personified and I hope their journeys will inspire and encourage you. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I should look at being a broker and being an owner, maybe starting a franchise. And so I went to speak to a franchise owner here in Atlanta and he asked me, Where, what territory would you think of for my company? I said, Buckhead. Like that's, that's where I'm at all the time. That's where I've, I do business, even though I do business all over. And he looked at me dead in my eyes and said, I, um, I didn't think the person for Buckhead would be someone like you. And it hit me for a second because I just said, person like me? Like, okay, I mean, maybe it's because of my age, because at the time I was young, like maybe it's that. Maybe, and, but then you just know, as a person of color, you know the stare that someone gives you when they are implying something deeper than what is coming out of their mouth. But he told me point blank, he didn't see someone like me. And so afterwards, uh, fast forward four years later or three years later to have a company call me and then for me to be put in a brokerage that I grew to 150 agents in the center of Atlanta Tech Village, the fourth largest tech consortium in the country in Buckhead. I hope he Googles me. <laughs> My name is Christian Ross. I'm a broker with Engel & Volkers Atlanta. I was the 2020 president of FIOPSI, Atlanta Council. That's the International Real Estate Federation. I have been on several committees for over 15 years with the Atlanta Realtors Association, and I'm currently on the Board of Governors with Capitus. That is the education arm and school for the Atlanta Realtors Association. Within this organization, um, of uh, 1.5 million members. It's called a, a presidential circle. And I remember my first time going and there's already very, a fraction of the members. And so I think that year it was like 1,200 members um, were selected to go to this president's circle event. Um, and out of that, uh, I think there was maybe five black people. And I am a person who lets my light shine with my tattoos, my colored hair and everything. And when I just say the looks you get for just being present in a room and how did you get here? You know, it's, it's very um, off-putting. Um, it's just like when you go riding down the street and you still have the old Georgia State flags that's been gone for 18 years and you understand the hidden message behind it. I'm Amy McCoy, broker owner of my hometown Realty Group. I uh, have been in business 17 years and hold multiple titles. Currently, I'm the second vice president of the Empire Board of Realtors and I am the technology chair for the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, Realtors Nation. Um, also serve on the Federal Finance and Housing Policy Committee for the National Association of Realtors and I have been selected as 2022 Leadership Academy candidate, So, which is a very very huge out of 1.5 million members, only 20 people were selected and, and yours truly was selected. So uh, many other roles uh, with uh, the uh, LGBTQ Real Estate Alliance, a member of ARIA, a member of Women's Council of Realtors, uh, just so much, <laughs> so much. <laughs> Initially when I began, I didn't even have uh, the cognitive mindset to feel that I was not safe. I didn't feel threatened. I didn't feel that I was in danger. I didn't feel that anything was going to happen. I was fine. I was happy to be there. And what I was doing, I was uh, staging a home for an open house, which is which was going to be the next day. 
There was a U-Haul. I had two workers with me. My car was parked on the street with my signs on it. The first thing I did was put balloons on the mailbox, and then my workers drove the U-Haul up. We were unloading, and then three cars of police came. Well, I'm thinking, oh, something is happening in the neighborhood. I don't know what's going on, but the police came to the property where I was, and he looked at my badge, and he said, oh, I see you are a realtor. I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, we're just checking to see what's going on. I said, I'm staging the property for an open house on tomorrow. I said, is there something wrong? I, he said, well, we got a call from the neighbors saying that they thought somebody might be robbing the house. And my question was, they thought I backed the U-Haul up? Turned on, I had turned on all the lights, and now they're thinking that I'm stealing when I am unloading? I don't understand that. And his response was, ma'am, I understand. I apologize, but we have to respond to every call there is. Uh, the thing about that was that it was daytime. When I started, it was daytime. I was the first car there. I had balloons on the mailbox, and the signs were on my car. So I did not understand that. But I tell you what I did do. I went over to meet the neighbors across the street. I introduced myself and the neighbors on both sides. And what I told them was that I'm about to list this house. There will be a lot of cars and a lot of people going in and out. And I went on to say, and everybody is not going to look the same but I want you to know that they will be here and I don't schedule any showings after sun goes down. So nobody should be here at that time after five o'clock. Uh, it was interesting because one person felt really badly or convicted or convinced and he called me later to list his house. So I don't know which person called the police. I'm thinking it was the person across the street, but that was what happened. And I have to tell you, I was so hurt and so crushed because that was something that I was not expecting. You know, even though we arrive in the skin that we arrive in and there's nothing that you can do about it, you feel that because you're doing the right things, you've gone to school, you are now a realtor and you want the very best for your clients. I'm doing all the right things. I'm dotting all the I's. I'm crossing all the T's. I am going above and beyond everything I need to do to make sure that this thing happens and happens appropriately and professionally. So I met with that and it took me a little while to get past it, but I never stopped. I never stopped. I'm Jean Lewis. I am a realtor, a certified mediator, and a trainer. And my background is in corporate America, where I led our ambassador program, which uh, was put in place to uh, encourage and increase the management of our female staff across the company. So we're talking about over 2,000 people. And also I led the community association, which uh, allowed us to help those in the community which are disenfranchised, especially children and teenagers.